I am all thumbs today. What's up, guys? I'm trying to take this selfie apart. <laughs> it's not working out for me right now. You know, maybe it's easier to look it up if I know how to take it apart. But I'm taking a lot of selfies apart. But this is what is this? A Samsung Grand Prime. It's Grand Prime, and there is an ARM processor in here, and I'm taking it apart so you guys can see it because. I need to make a point in this video. So, stick with me for a second. I've been reading through some of the comments, of course, um, and one of the big ones that I keep seeing is basically asking, why, why isn't Nintendo using x86 on their new system? More than likely, they've seen the presser for, for PlayStation and Xbox, or even just read the specs, and you realize pretty quickly that they're using an x86 architecture. And then a lot of people are curious why Nintendo is using an ARM processor, an ARM arch architecture with the Tegra chip. And uh, I, I realize that this is going to be kind of hard to explain so that everybody gets this. I realized it uh, the other day when I was trying to explain it to my wife as like a test just to see. And I really, this is very hard to explain overall um, by cutting down a lot of the jargon and stuff that I would have to use otherwise. So I'm going to make this as simple as possible. Uh, I'm going to try to use some uh, some examples that if you if you are very familiar with ARM and x86, uh, this some of these examples might not fit a hundred percent. But I'm going to try my best to make it so you can have a general idea of why Nvidia is using an ARM instead of x86. So first of all, I will show you guys. This is an ARM processor out of this is out of a Samsung Grand Prime cell phone um, and this is an ARM processor. I've looked at the exact one but it is one that Qualcomm made. Okay, It has that and then it has the GPU directly next to it and it's the black chip there between that silver and then here is the GPU using this metal grate as a heatsink. Uh, cooled passively completely of course. Okay, And right now I'm going to hold up a Core 2 Duo. It's a 64-bit processor using the x86 architecture. You're going to see very quickly how different the sizes are here. Um, this one does have a heat spreader, but I can assure you the die underneath is uh, bigger than this entire top of that chip. So here is the, the Core 2 Duo. And you can see how much larger it is. It needs this heat spreader, obviously, but underneath of that, if I delitted it, it would be, the, the actual die would be roughly the size, maybe a little larger of that black top to the arm for the entire thing. So. What is the difference between x86 and ARM? Well, if you want to know the simplest answer, if you just want to know why Nvidia is doing it, I can, or why Nintendo is using Nvidia, I can explain it to you very easily. The reason you use ARM is to save power on the battery, and you want it to be able to run it off battery. Intel is struggling mightily to get these x86s to run as well as the ARM does, uh, the ARM processors do. Uh, in like mobile cell phones and stuff. Now they are making strides to get into it, just like ARM is making strides to get into the server market. They're both kind of, they both started on different sides, okay, of the spectrum. And uh, Intel designed x86 for, mostly for business servers and stuff, and then they found their way into the home and everything with their processors, and ARM designed their stuff so that it could power things like printers, which was really popular at the time, they're still in printers, um, you know, like three printers use them all the time. Your laser printer uses it, things like that. They're in cable boxes. Basically, anything small that you use electronically probably has an ARM chip in it. Believe it or not, um, depending some uh, some for example, uh, Wi-Fi cards and computers use them. A lot of stuff uses ARM processors for like secondary tasks. It wasn't until I want to say the mid 2000s, maybe 2003 or 2004, that ARM really started getting serious about designing their little processors to think for themselves, essentially, and run an entire operating system. And that really got popular, like really big, when Android adopted it as its big uh, protocol. Now, ARM is not technically a processor. ARM is a set of instructions that we use for the CPU, the CPU, to function, okay? Qualcomm, Samsung, these are all people that make the Nvidia with the Tegra, these are all people that make these chips and then use the ARM uh, protocol for it to run correctly. Apple 
one of the biggest cell phone cell phone makers in the United States in the world. They use ARM and they design their own chips and their chips are some of the highest quality if you consider how well it runs with what it has. I mean just recently, recently uh, the iPhones came to 2 gigs of RAM, the bigger one has 3. This is a big deal considering cell phones like the Note and Samsung have just been jamming tons of RAM in there but having the same performance as an iPhone. And honestly it comes down to a couple things. The reason, the reason Nintendo really wanted to get into this is because the ARM processor, this protocol with processor, is a growing market, okay? x86, while still very functional, we all use it. I have a gaming computer, I have a gaming laptop, it uses x86 because I use Intel processors. But I think everybody, all the companies know, the big money right now is in the mobile market. Tablets, cell phones, that's what we use. Everybody has a cell phone. I think one out of every two people who buy a cell phone have a tablet, and it's just growing. And we're, we're, we're in this, um, we're already trained to essentially throw our cell phone out or trade it in every two years on our upgrade cycle. And that means more processors have to be made, and ARM is licensing. So the way it works, if a company wants to use an ARM processor, well, the ARM protocol, they have to license to ARM to use that protocol in their, in their design. Okay, and ARM is such a well done protocol for these chips that they pay a lot of money to do it. It, it really is. There's a couple things that Intel can't even figure out that ARM has done, and that's what I'm going to get into. It's a big deal, um, and probably is the biggest reason that NVIDIA's Tegra is going to be in the Switch. So, going from there, they're both on different sides, and they're both trying to work towards the other side. ARM is doing everything they can to get their processors into servers, because Servers are where these companies make their big money because when you go to a company who needs servers all these games you play run on servers Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, Steam, they're all using servers to deliver content to let you play online, well not, not Steam really, but PS4, Xbox One, Microsoft, they're all using servers. Companies use massive amounts of servers to store our data and they're all running mostly right now on either AMD or Intel stuff, but it's all x86, okay? And ARM desperately wants to get into that because it is big, big money. And ARM can, they can offer a lot of benefits. And recently, recently the iPhone 7 posted better than numbers for single core performance than a Xeon processor, which is insane. So Nintendo shocked me when they said they were going to use an ARM processor. I, was, I wasn't super surprised that I know we're having a mobile system, but... I was shocked because this, it, believe it or not, is cutting edge technology that they're getting into. They are getting into a market that is growing, whereas PlayStation and Xbox are getting into a market that is kind of declining considering x86 is not in your cell phone. Intel is trying, but it's just not as good as what ARM is already doing. Okay, so we've already established x86 is a power hungry processor. It uses enormous amounts of power compared to ARM but you get enormous amounts of performance, okay? So the trade-off. ARM works really well on battery, giving you good performance without destroying the battery and needing, you know, like, I think this is a Core 2 Duo. I want to say this probably needs 45 to 50 watts to run. This ARM needs, like, 3 watts to run. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need much. This isn't the top-of-the-line one. Top-of-the-line ones that are getting up to 15 watts now. That's pretty, that's actually pretty good for ARM. But the big thing about ARM that... Intel just cannot figure out about how to add it into x86, okay? So, if you notice your cell phone, especially the ones made in the past two years, I'd say, the standby time for these cell phones has gotten huge. Call time, like when you talk on your phone, has gotten tremendous. Remember when the Thunderbolt came out on, on, uh, on Verizon, and it was like, if you had it on 4G LTE, it was like an hour and a half, two hours of battery or something like that? Well, that's grown. Now, the reason that's grown is because ARM, I want to say it was in 2011, came up with a really, really neat idea to add in cores, extra cores, into, into the dot, like onto the chip. And what they do is they function as a power saver. So what happens is, in a, in a laptop, an x86 laptop or a desktop, more so laptops because they run off batteries, when not in use, they downclock. They can't 
do anything other than downclock because there's only that one CPU in there. There's multiple cores, but there's one CPU. With the ARM processor, like this, this one should have multiple cores in it that could switch to. I'll have to double check, but this is a cheaper cell phone, so it might not. Your Galaxy phones, like the newer ones, the S6, S7, the Note phones, they all have different chips that it can switch to. So for example, let's say the CPU comes with is a quad core. My phone, I don't know, it's around here, is a quad core, but it has two other cores that it can switch to when not in use. So the reason a lot of phones out, like my phone included, has a good battery life but a small battery is because when not in use or when doing very low tasks like talking on your phone, it switches to these cores that use very, very minor amounts of power. And that's why talk time has gone from, if you're a little older like me and you had an original <laughs> smartphone, talk time was terrible. It was like two, three hours. It was bad. Now it's like eight, nine hours you can talk on your phone before it dies because of those processors. Intel just cannot figure this out for some reason. So you go back to the mobile market with Nintendo picking a processor. Of course they're going to pick the processor that gives them the best amount of battery life and that is absolutely an ARM processor. Specifically they went with Nvidia and the reason they went with Nvidia is because they wanted a very powerful GPU and Nvidia is definitely designing this specifically for them and ARM makes sense. It's a little easier to, I don't want to say code for, but it's a little more basic. You have to type out more and tell the, tell the processor to do more for it to work. For example, uh, the best way I can describe that to x86, a, x86 is much more a complex uh, system. Like, so if you have to type out code, you have to type out one line for this, as opposed to kind of spelling it out more for the ARM processor where multiple lines of code are used for the same thing. This is a com complex one. The ARM is, called, is kind of a restrictive coding experience, that's, if that makes any sense. So if I ask somebody to go into the kitchen and make popcorn, that's all I would say, hey, can you make popcorn? They would go in there, they'd do it themselves, they'd bring it back to me. Now, if it was, that's if it was x86 doing it. Now, if it was ARM, I would have to go in there and tell them every step, do this, do this, do this, do this, to get the same result. You have to work closer to the CPU, and some people like that because you're closer and you can do things in there so it can be more efficient. For example, I can tell them how long to put, you know, if I'm telling someone to make popcorn, how long to put it in the microwave rather than them do it themselves in a set path that they know, okay? So there's more work, I would say, going into ARM, but it's also more efficient if you know what you're doing. That's one of the reasons to power save is so important there because you can use these cores and tell it specifically when to use the lower cores and when to use the stronger cores. You load up a game, you switch to the higher end high frequency cores, you exit out of the game, you're on the home menu just reading a text, goes to the lower cores, okay? The Nintendo Switch should use that same aspect. You're searching the store, you know, on, on uh, I don't know, their, whatever their new, whatever the new online service is going to be. You're searching the store, okay? It's going to be using low powered cores. You load up a game, it'll switch quickly. You won't even notice it. That's the other amazing thing about the ARM. Both, all these cores have access to the same memory at the same time. So it can switch on the fly. You don't have to shut down the entire system for these cores to load up. They're always active. It's actually really amazing. And it can shut down those high frequency cores and hand off to these low ones when not in use. It's, it's actually a really, really cool technology. And it's only been around for a couple years now. I'd say like five, six years. Um, so. Yes, that's why Nintendo is using ARM. It makes a lot of sense. It's a moat. Guys, let's 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 just get this straight. The the Switch is a handheld system. People want to tell me it's not. Um, I'm gonna tell you it is for a couple reasons. One, it's using a mobile processor. It has a screen. It's running off battery, and you hold it in your hand. It's a system you hold in your hand and and can do this with. Hold it, you know, put it in your face, play with, play Mario. That's a handheld system. I mean, come on. I don't see how it's not. It it literally fits the definition of handheld. So you're gonna use a mobile processor and it's gonna be ARM because there's not much else. But those are the big differences between x86 and ARM. There's some really cool wiki pages you can go read or you can actually even go to Intel's site and read some serious documentation if you wanna really get into it. I just wanna give you guys the basics and why Nvidia and Nintendo are partnering, partnering to make this system and that's why. So uh, if you guys liked the video, hit like. Um, let me know in the comments if you had any questions about it. I'll do the best to answer it. Um, I'm not an ARM processor specialist. I'm not an x86 specialist. 
I've done programming for both at this point. Um, mostly programming Android apps and stuff, mostly programming C++ and C Sharp, but nothing super fancy or out there, okay? So, um, but if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer it, and definitely leave a comment below what you think of NVIDIA and Nintendo partnering with ARM chip. And uh, definitely subscribe if you haven't, because there's a lot of videos coming, and I'm going to come up with some other really cool stuff to do. So, definitely, definitely subscribe. Also, if you have not already... Follow me on Twitter because I'm going to basically be posting videos as they come out and I'm going to try to post some schedules and stuff I'm working on. And you can even ask me questions through Twitter. So it's uh, it's at Spawn Wave Media. I'll put it in the description and I'll put it on the screen here as well. So um, until next time, guys, I will see you later.